you are you are in uh, a session that I'm calling Playing the Changes, Practical Harmony. Um, and I'm going to give you three handouts, and we're going to actually go pretty quickly into the, the first one. Um, I'm going to give you a 12-bar blues chart um, so to make sure that everybody's on the same page about what a 12-bar blues is. Um, obviously, playing blues, what does it mean to play blues harmonica? There's a lot of things that go into playing blues harmonica. Um, and um, so a 12 bar, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about 12 bar blues, what 12 bar blues is. You don't have to, if you want to play blues harmonica, eventually one of the things you have to be able to do is, is know the harmonies, to think harmonically. I'm going to give you uh, something I call very first harmonica blues. It's going to be too basic for some of you, and it's going to be just right for others of you. Um, <coughs> One of the key, the, the largest point about what I want to get you through today, not only is the sort of, how does that 12 bar progression work? What are those chords that are in it? And I see we have a guitar back there, so I may actually, is there a guitar? Yeah, there is one back there. Yeah. Fantastic, so I'm going to use that. Um, but what, how do we connect that 12 bar blues and what I call the imperatives that are in it? Um, the uh, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, how do we connect that with the harmonica? In other words, I want part of, there's not a whole lot of technical music school kind of stuff you need to know as harmonica players, but I, as blues harmonica players. But you need to know this. You need to know what a 12 bar blues is, and you need to know where to find the root, the third, the fifth, and then the seventh, and you need to know what that seventh is, and I'll talk about that. The root, the third, the fifth, the seventh. You might even want to know what a ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth is, but that's jazz, right? We can bracket that off. Um, although a ninth chord is a really cool bluesy chord, as I'll show you. Um, and so that's that. The key thing is to know where those notes are. Those what I'm going to call. And if you have, you have a pen or something to write with, if you do, make sure you know you got something to write on. Let me. Um, in fact, why don't I just pass this out right now, since this is the first thing we're going to go into. They want to pass it around. This is the 12 bar blues progression. All of you at some time or other have probably seen a version of this, but maybe you haven't. And, um, and this is really important, as I said. This is, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, this is really important stuff. Um, and before we do any of this, I'm sure that we, I'm going to have you play at various points. Let's do a little bit of something that I've done in other sessions of mine, call and response mm -hmm. practice. C, C. So we're going to take a C harp. Yeah, everything you do today is a C harp's going to work. Um, and let's just do, um, I think I'll, I'll use some chord tones. But I'll start really easy. So I'm going to start with just a two-hole draw. I'm going to tap my foot, and if you want to, if you want to be good blues harmonica players, you need to start tapping that foot, in part because, and here's my challenge to you, there's a, there's a dividing line for harmonica players. When, I, when somebody comes to visit me for a private lesson, which doesn't happen a lot these days, there's a dividing line, and either, you're a, you, either you, you meet this standard or you don't yet meet this standard. But I'll give it to you, so that they, and you'll know. And when you can do this, then you'll say, I met the, that Gusto standard. And I would say this is a standard for Certainly it's a standard for anybody who wants to be considered an intermediate player, or certainly an advanced intermediate, if you can't meet the standard, which is, can you play me a blues, can you play a 12-bar blues in, that has 48 beats, because a bar has four beats. If I go one, two, three, yeah, there's one extra, but sort of funny. But, um, a bar is four beats. So let me give you some basic music school. A bar is four beats. One, two, three, four. Not in not in certain kinds of jazz. Boom, te -te 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 -te, all that old style New Orleans is two four, but a, but your typical bar we can consider it's four beats. A bar is four beats. Twelve bars is twelve bars times four beats. Forty-eight beats. So I'll ask somebody who comes to visit me, can you play me a twelve bar blues solo? In which I can hear the changes, I can or somehow hear that you know where you are and that has no more or no less than 48 beats. Now, the easiest possible way is in, would be to do it in the way that I'm going to call very uh, first uh, 
very first harmonica blues would be to play the root of the chord on the beat. But we'll do that in a minute. I'll show you a, a, a couple of different ways, just so you know what it sounds like to go through. The reason this is important, again, if you're going to play with other players, I mean, jazz for jazz players, this, is, this goes without saying. They do all kinds of complicated things. They go one, two, one, two, three, four, da, 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 one, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, there, and they're counting in their head. They've got that count going. Part of your duty as a blues harmonica player is to hardwire the count. So that's why I say you want to tap your foot, right, to hardwire the count. Um, so let me just, I'll show you what that might sound like. Here, here are a couple of ways of playing through a 12 bar blues. Uh, and, and the one will be more complex. I'll do an easy one first and then a harder one. So the easy one might be, uh, not a super easy one, but an easy one might be something that derives from blues vocals. It might be something like this. Yeah. I'm sure you can go back and count it if you're recording it, but if you count it through, let's, let me do the same thing and I want you to count. I want you to go like this. This is something you can do and you should do as part of your training um, with all the blues songs you can muster. We're going to do some of that. Um, I want you to count. One, I'll go one, two, ready, go. And then I want you to go one, two, and tap your foot and go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Don't, you have to, don't look at anything right now. You don't need to for, for now. Um, and I want you to do it while I play. And I'm going to do two choruses. First one's going to be what I just did. The second will be quite a bit trickier. But I'll also be hitting the changes. So I want, let's go together. One, two, ready, go. You know what you're going to do? You're going to count out loud. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. no, we don't know. Count out loud. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> So it's hard. We were together, right? Hopefully we were together. Yeah, you had to the first 12. <laughs> <laughs> first 12. I wanted to keep going. She said, no, you're starting over again. I, was like, I thought you were going into a different state. I, I thought we were in the I was wrong. Oh, oh. Yeah. the 48. I thought you were going to count one, two, you know, no, no, you, 48, mean, two, three, four, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, No, I meant starting to. Anyway, so I don't think I had, I don't think I had an extra beat, but it's possible to draw. Anyway, it's, a, it's an unusual kind of thing I just asked you to do, to count along. But you should be doing a lot of this. So you want to develop as blues harmonica players. What you should be doing is putting on blues tracks. Hopefully they're 12 bar blues and this will work if they're 8 bar or 16 bar. Um, and by the way, there are those two other kinds of blues. It's worth pausing just for one minute and, and noting that. So songs like Trouble in Mind or Key to the Highway are 8 bar blues. Mm -hmm. Most are 12. Most of the 90 percent of blues are probably 12. Let me just—I'll play you an eight-bar blues so you know what it sounds like, and I'll use an overblow or two to. Trouble in mind, babe, I'm blue. Won't be blue always. Cause the sun's gonna shine in my back door someday. If you count through that, you find that you're going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, to eight, two, three, four. It's actually an important early form 
file it away. Gus will put it out there for you now. Don't now forget it. But it's there. Eight bar. Every once in a while, those eight bar blues will come up. I I got the key to the highway. Build out. I'm bound to go. Gonna leave here running. Walking's most too slow. I usually sing it in G. I sing it in A usually, so keep it low. There's also a 16 bar blues, um, and a lot of people forget this. It's sort of more of a church kind of blues. Um, song ever, so I don't want to, but I Got a Woman is a 16 bar blues, it's a religious groove that Ray Charles, that's how he created soul music, is to take a church song and make it into a blues song. Yeah. Is so there always a, oh, sorry. Oh, lady, sorry, go ahead. Uh, is there always a one, four, and five chord in, in these, whether it's an eight bar or not? There's all, you find all of those chords. <laughs> Those three chords. Now I used, uh, there's a couple of other chords that turn up in the blues that I just played. So I just played a blues. I, I, you're asking me about, are they all one, four, and five chords? So that's a one chord. Take a look at your sheet. That's the one. Everybody look at the sheet I gave you. Two, two, three, four. I'm still on that one chord. Now I'm going to... So I went up to the 4 chord. That's the 5 chord, the 4 chord. Do me a favor if you would and not, and, and not play right now, just because I want to get people focused on this. Those are all 1, 4, and 5, and most blues have them. Even if it's an 8-bar blues. If it's an 8-bar blues, yeah, a lot. They just organize them in a different way. I got the key to the highway. So they go... Build out, I'm bound to go. So that's one, one to five. I'm again, I'm going to tell you to forget all this stuff because we're going to do 12 bar. But it's good to know that it's out there so you can forget about it for the time being. But when you encounter it, for example, when you leave here and you go home and do what I ask you to do, which is take that 12 bar thing and put on the blues songs you like, you may encounter some that just don't fit that. In which case, it's good to know what I, what I, that there is an 8 bar and a 16 bar. 12 bar are the ones that are <coughs> by far and away the most common versions of 12 bar blues. Different kinds of grooves. So they may show up, but we're going to look at that in just a second, okay? Um, what, I what I did when I did Trouble in Mind, I did... Uh, versions, different variants, and by the way, now you understand why knowing just a little bit of jazzy blues guitar can be really helpful to a harmonica player, so I'd encourage you, use me as an example of somebody who's gained an awful lot as a harmonica player by knowing some of the stuff I just did, because if I can play the chord, then I can look for it on the harp. All right, let's go back. Question? Yes, sure, please. Um, so I was trying to understand the significance of 8 versus 12 versus 16. What's, what's, because... During the song, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I want you to forget what I just showed you. <laughs> and eight, and eight sixteen, because uh, uh, yeah, here's why. I'm going to need your help on this. I tend to, to over-explain and confuse people and put too much out there. And I was doing it for the sole purpose not of teaching you anything about it, but to say, it, when you get this home and I and you're trying to find your and, and make sure you can count your twelve bar blues, you may encounter this other stuff, and I want to make sure that it doesn't. Okay, so that's can I just really ask the question sure. in a way where you just go yes or no, Absolutely. and then, then we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Uh, my <coughs> impression is that um, 
inside an entire song, whether it's 16 bar blues or, or, uh, or 12 bar blues, 8 bar blues, the significance of it being, say, an 8 is the 8 signifies a start and a finish of a segment. And that segment defined, okay, now that's an 8 bar pattern. blues pattern song, and so there's a bunch of those segments, but they're made up of 8 bars at a time. That's right. Okay. That's yeah. All right. So to, to, to play 12 bar blues is to basically once you've mastered this template, is to be aware that any song, they'll have a little intro part, one, a two, a one, two, three, four, and then you'll be, usually, well, you don't always begin on bar one, something you have to end up learning about. But basically, a 12 bar blues is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 choruses of this pattern. Okay. And it has an intro somehow that gets you into this. And it has uh, the shave and a haircut two bits. That gets you out of it. But otherwise, what you've asked is, and everybody get that? That basically what the reason this is so important is 95% of what's going on in a recording of a 12 bar blues is that template lurking behind everything that's getting played. And you cycle through from bar one to bar twelve, and then you start again. Right. That's why we call that the turnaround because it gets right. you back up to here. So that's a, it's a very good question. Um, so the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm curious how would you bother that this normal vocal over the turnaround? I'm sorry, what the question was? What? I'm curious how the form evolved that there's no vocal over the turnaround oh. because the vocal fills up the lot before. No, it does not. It does not. Earlier on in the song, it does. Is it not? Mm, no. And actually, yeah. Yeah. Don't you get a lot of things that are like that? I don't know, so that's not 12 bar blues. That's not 12 bar blues. We've got a lot of questions. Say that again. Okay, you've got typical old fashioned style. You'd have first line, 12, second line, 12. Those two lines are the same. Third line, 12. First line, 12. To get your 48 minutes. You know what? I'm going to have to ask you guys to do something I hate to do. You're going to have to trust me on this okay. before we ask more questions because actually that's exactly where I'm going. Okay. okay. I'm okay. sorry. Except that you're already up. confused by something I haven't yet explained. All right. So that's right. No, no. Okay. I, so, so, and again, this is my fault because mm -hmm. I tried to throw too much out there to warn you. So let's just cut right to the videotape. Yeah. Today I'm going to teach you about chord tones and color tones. I'm going to teach you about the three chords in the chord progression. And I'm going to teach you how to read this in a way that makes sense. Now this is just a template, but it's an extremely important template that can help you make a whole lot of sense of the songs that you hear, and specifically your role as the harmonica player in those songs. When I say chord tones and color tones, I mean I'm going to teach you what's called, and you might want to write this down, um, potentially. Uh, I'm going to teach you, so a chord tone is it's either a root, a third, or a fifth. The best way of thinking about that is to use the, and I hate doing this in Canada, the American National Anthem. Um, oh, say, can you see? All right, we're using this to teach blues. It's a bluesier song, right? Um, that's fifth, third, root. So if you can put in your mind, oh, say, fifth, major third, root. Major third, happy sound. American National Anthem, happy sound. Um, minor third would give a sadder sound. Oh, say. Major third, root, major third, fifth. Fifth, third, root. So this is, your, now you're in music school. Now we're not talking about blues history, we're talking about the stuff that you picked up the harmonica to get away from. <laughs> you thought you could scoop by. Well, you can, but you need this one hour with me. The harmony knots. Um, fifth, third, root. That's, those are, that's called the triad. But it's a file out of way. Major triad. Is root it blues three. using one, four, five? Or am I transposing here? In the wrong We're talking way. about what the one, four, five chords consist of. Each chord, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, consists of a major triad. Okay. These three notes. So on the one chord, Oh, say, root, third, fifth, fifth, third, root. And your job eventually is going to be to find those notes on the harmonica, the root, the third, and the fifth of that 
one chord. In order to play good blues, you need to know how to go. And it turns out, of course, actually, I'll cut ahead slightly just to make it a little easier, that if you go four draw, three draw, two draw, root third is fifth third root. Two draw, three draw, four draw. In other words, right there on the harmonica, waiting for you, is the root, the third, and the fifth. Take your harmonica out, play two draw, uh, play four draw, three draw, two draw. That's oh say. Right. Four draw, three draw, four draw, three draw, two draw. Oh say. And that's that's root, third, fifth. That's fifth, third, I'm going down, so it's fifth, third, root. So the, the notes are stacked up. If you go from the bottom, I'm just trying to give you the song that'll help you or help remind you indelibly. <laughs> What's O <okay>? Canada? <laughs> oh, Canada. Okay, keep changing it. Oh, oh first Canada. <laughs> it's not as good as song. Oh, third, fifth, fifth room. There you go. Okay. Good. 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 I'm not a chauvinist. We'll work with whatever we got. Root third fifth, and it's right there for you. Root third fifth. So a chord, a basic chord, and, and, and this is true for blues or anything, has that root third fifth. Those are called chord tones. Let's just, for the heck of it, let's go to the four chord. The root third fifth in the four chord would be. It turns out that's extremely easy too. Go four blow, five blow, six blow. Okay. So we're going to come back to this in a moment. I'm going to give you a lot more. I'm going to talk about the five chord, which is a whole lot trickier. But the first idea I want you to have in mind is that the harmonic is set up to actually get that triad, that we call it a major triad, the root third fifth, root major third fifth, of the one chord and the four chord. It's kind of naturally set up to do that, right? Um, now let's, I want to back and fill, and I want us to look at this 12 bar sequence. Um, and I'm going <laughs> to sing and I'm going to play. Um, and I want you to notice, it, not, not to play well, but I want you to notice something. Um, notice, here's a couple of things to notice. First of all, notice what's out here, A, A, B. That might confuse you, what's out on the left margin, A, A, B. That's actually a notation much more from what I do as a, as a college professor, which is to say the A line of the blues. Um, as a segment. It's a, it's, it's, you, say, you sing a line, and it turns out if you look at the top of bar one, everybody see where the bars are numbered? You see the upper left-hand yes. corner of each square? It says 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, right? And then 9, 10, 11, 12. Basically three lines, this 12-bar blues consists of three lines of four. And again, you, you, this is so important, I can't tell you. And so if this, comes as, if this is new to you and sort of a shock to the system, good, because you, you needed this. <laughs> You really did. This is this is high quality vitamins. Um, a A. So most blues actually have a line. Many blues. It's a very common pattern. A line, and then the line is repeated. Notice that the line I have here, first line of blues verse, and notice that it takes about two bars. And then so it's bars one and two, and then there's a place where there's no no words going on. So for the most part in blues, there's First two bars are, are verse, and then there's an empty space. Why is that important to your harmonic players? Because that's, that's where our, our, your job is to come in. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the same thing, the line's repeated, but notice there's a difference. And this is a very, very important difference in the blues. Notice that you've got this little thing, it's a Roman numeral four, and actually has a little seven, and I'll talk about that. It's a, a chord with a seventh added, which is a color tone, which is a bluesy tone. And you have this one V, this four chord for two, two bars, and then back to one chord. Now, right away, you notice something important, which is in the first eight bars, 
How many bars of one chord do you have? Five. Seven, six, seven, yeah, it's six. six. Yes, six. Two. Yes, six. So that if you notice here in this bar two, there's a little parenthetical thing. Forget about that for now. Sometimes, so for the most part, it's one, 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 one. Four bars of one chord, then two bars of four chord, two bars of one chord. There's a lot of one chord in a blues. So it's going to be really helpful to know what the root third and fifth are, to know what kind of notes you can wail on, how, how you can connect in the notes of the harmonica with what's going on, on the, in the guitar player behind you. Adam? Yes. A question. Sure. Um, did I hear you say that, that um, in bar five, mm -hmm. um, on the four chord, that when you're playing uh, four blow, five blow, six blow, that that is still root third and fifth? It's the root third and fifth of that of, of that, that chord. Of that chord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this will turn out to be important in certain ways. Um, it's just important to know that, but it but it doesn't mean that those are the only notes you play. Right. Okay. Um, that's important. <laughs> and the reason for that is because it's possible to sing a solo blues, or, or it's possible to sort of do an entire blues on one chord. Um, it sort of evolved. It evolved by the mid 1920s that this is sort of how people were doing them. But, but there are other there are other ways of doing it. And in the part of Mississippi that I live, a lot of people will do when Charday Thomas and her a fife and drum band do stuff. They just have a fife and they have drums. There's no harmonic background, and they'll do 12 bar blues. And they'll 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 suggest them with inflections of the voice, and and with the lyrics they're singing. But they won't have the harmonic background, and yet it still works. So that's important to know. Um, but this, this, this is really important to know. Um, then notice the third line. A, A, by the way, this is sometimes called A prime, this thing here, because sometimes we change that, the lyrics a, a little bit, we inflect them a little differently to suggest that there's something different going on as a way of resonating with that four chord. As a way of resonating with the four chord. And then finally, notice bar nine. What do I have there? What's the harp? What's the chord that's being played? Five. It says five. Or five seven. Again, this dom I'll show you what seven sound like. What's bar ten? Four, 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 or four seven, or four dominant seven. And then bar eleven, we'll come back to the one. And then you've got this weird kind of split bar twelve. What does this all sound like? Well, if you were to just follow along as I play, um, and if I were to play Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. We have a change now to the four chord. And by the way, that's the seventh the thing that's written down there. It turns out that blues love sevenths. There's a there's a reason for that. Um, if I have time, I'll tell you. But they love sevenths. It creates tension. Oh well, I, you know what? Why not just tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. It's the devil's interval. Actually. It's because when you when you have a chord that has this chord, this this note, the major third, as the one chord does, it has this major third, and I put in this note, it's what I call the French taxi cab or French ambulance note. It's the most annoying attention getting. It's the it's what's it's the it's it's a, it's a uh, it's called a tritone. And in, in the Middle Ages, um, uh, religious people in charge of religious music said that's the devil's interval. It, it creates tension that should not exist in God's world. That's seriously, I mean literally, like five angels can dance on the head of this, head of this pin, but that's the tritone. Whenever you got a seventh going on, you got the seventh, you got the devil's interval in this blues. And it's a very tension-inducing note. By the way, play your five-hole draw. Play your three-hole draw. All right. Now, if you jump back and forth between three and five, you're a French, you're a French ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming through. We're coming through. Um, so that's why sevenths are all over the blues. But really, what, what's all over the blues is that funny devil's interval, that tritone. And so when I go. Blues works 
by manipulating tension that's within the melody, within the harmony. This morning I talked about the blue third. That's tension between major and minor in the melody. This is in the harmony. start like that or like this. That's a seventh chord. That's a diminished chord, but both of them have, it turns out, the tritone in them. Alright, too much information. TMI, guys, I don't get this. Yes. Uh, how do you know sure. which are the one, four, and five chords? When you say, how do you know, what, what do you need? Well, like to, to play this, huh? like, how do you know what to play for a one, four, or five? You, as the harmonica player? Yeah. Okay, so that's where we're going. Well, okay. So, but one thing, so first I want to make you be able to count and, and, and hear. Um, we went through some of that, right? So, what, what's the root third and the fifth of the one chord? We did that ten minutes ago. Two, three, three, four. Two, three, three, four. Three, three, four. Three, four. So those notes will always work. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if that happens. I'm going to play. Part of, part of working as a harmonica player with harmony is filing away the feeling that you get and the sound that's produced by playing specific notes over specific chords. Mm -hmm. And so when I play these chords, I want you guys, let's just all, um, I want you to go do stuff on the two-hole draw while I'm playing this. That's the root of this chord. That's, so root, the root of the chord is the most closely associated note the, the note associated most closely with the chord. So it's always going to sound good. And this is really true. If, I, if I'm playing a blues in G, and you've got the right harp to play blues in G, which is a C harp, and I play... play just this in draw. If I said, try to uh, can you do that? One, two, ready, go. So the interesting thing here is that after all of that I started to, to throw at you in the way of harmony and roots and thirds and fifths, you can just take that one note and play over the entire thing. We are officially one note harmonica. Why does that work? Well, what's interesting is knowing something about harmony can tell you why, why it works. Um, so here's something to think about. Why, why, did that, why does that work? It's one thing if I'm playing the one chord and you guys are playing the root of the one chord. Right? <coughs> why does it? Why does that sound good when I move to the four chord? Is why does one? playing the two hole draw sound good? Is it one of the yeah. notes of the triads of each chord? Well, it's, you're exactly right. So it has a. It is a note that's in. Here's the way to think about it. What are what are the root third and fifth of the four chord? We did this about ten minutes ago. Four five six. Four five six below. Right. Turns out. One, two, and three blow are also the root third and fifth. The way the harmonic is set up, if you go. I went root third, fifth of four chord. Root third, fifth, root third, fifth, root. Just try that. One, just blow, straight up. One, two, three, four, five, six, just blow. Monica is set up to play root third fifth, root third fifth. It's a C harp. This is a C chord. But of course what we're doing is we're playing a blues in G and that C chord comes, not it's not home base, but it's sort of it's what we call our chord. One of the notes in the chord. It's in the chord. So the three blow and the two draw are the same note. Right. And so what we did was play the fifth 
when you play the two-hole draw, as I continue to go from the G chord up to the C chord, the note you're playing is the fifth of this chord. Mm. Now that, that should, if you just pause, then this is probably where everybody's brains begin to crack and hurt. Say it again, right? <laughs> so, when you play, when you stay on the two-hole draw as I move through the changes, look at your sheet, as I move into bars five and six with that four chord, you might want to write, you guys might want to write down Two draw, three draw, four draws, root third, fifth, yeah. and the one chord. Same Hold thing. on one second, if I could. Now that I'm taking Two draw, three draw, four draw. Again, I, yeah. So I, 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 I four I, chord. So one chord. Two draw, three draw, one four chord. draw are the root third, fifth of the one chord. Right. Four, five, six, or one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine, are the root third and fifth of the four chord. On the blow of the drop. Oh, sorry, blow. Blow. Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry, sure. I must type slowly. <laughs> the root third fifth of the one chord are two draw, three draw, four draw. Mm -hmm. The root third fifth of the four chord are four blow, five blow, six blow. So you can go. Your love light? That could be a good way to remember it. Root third fifth, one chord. Root third fifth of four chord. Is this new? This stuff's kind of new to most of you, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's so really, I'm just hearing that the, yeah. the four, five, six blow, blow is the root third fifth, fifth of the four. Of the four. four. But, but you were tying also the, the two, three, four blow to to the. Okay, I'm That's very clear, very, very clear on blow four, five, six yeah. is, is the, the root third, fifth of the fourth chord. Right, and so are one, two, three blow. Okay, that's what's new. So the right. Mm. One, two, three blow are what? So play those notes while I play the C chord. So play one, two, three blow, two, two blow, three blow. Two, three blow. This makes it really easy in some sense. Yeah. Root third, fifth. The key thing is the, the one chord and the four chord are the easy ones. It's the five chord that messes everybody up. But we'll get to that. Four, five. Um, okay, so going all the way from one to six, it's the four, fourth chord. Yeah. 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 So the, the harmonic is set up to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, root third, fifth, the eight, blow. Root third fifth, root third fifth, root third fifth, root. Yeah. That's the harmonic. That's why it's easy to pick up a harmonic and go, and it sounds like a chord. That's your. It's set up to play that chord. Yeah. So if the song's on the fourth chord, you can blow holes one, two, three at the same time, or four, five, six at the same time. You can fit. Yeah, and you can do melodies that involve those notes. Yeah. But you're going to sound a little bit classical if you do that, yeah, yeah. and the reason for that is sort of what I what I did in the in the in the blues is that blues singing doesn't move that way, so blues singing tends to move. So, but it's still important to know what the chord tones are. It's still important to know what the chord tones are. Um, here's what I want to do. I want to I want to back off for a sec. And I want to just do a little bit of listening and counting practice. And then we're going to get back to this and sort of how to use them. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to rather than me playing, I want to put on some blues cuts. And I want to see if you guys can count through. This is a, an essential part of every blues harmonica player's practice. Let me, let me, let me um, kind of find something. Well, here's medium shuffle in G. And what I want you to do as this is playing, I want to try to count it for you and with you. Well, let's... Hold on. So where are we? Let me do it again. And I want you guys to count loud when you know where you are. I'm going to start it from scratch again. And I want you to count the way I taught you to count. One, two, three, four. Or if it's starting somewhere other than that, you, wherever it is. Yeah. Thank you. 
is that there was no five chord. It never really went to that. How would you know then that you're sort of at the point where you're going to go back to one? Because it never did that. Well, one thing you do, one thing blues players do is use their ears. If you listen, you can hear the drummer kind of getting you ready to keep it. Bring it back around. Bring it back around. And he did that actually in the lead up to bar five. Listen again, listen one more time and listen to how that works. basically juke, but avoiding copyright in front of it. It's the, sh it's the show blues uh, harp track. Okay, let's, let's see how this one works. Juke. One, two, one, two, three. This is tougher. Three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, six, count it with me. Seven, two, See if this, let's see how this works. Again, part of what you begin to learn when you do this is the different is the variations. In this one, the guitar is all, is really swinging and it's not really on the beats in the same way that the first one was that Jimmy Reed style, good tunk, good tunk, right? Um, let's hear this one. Different groove. Let's hear. I have no idea what's coming up. So it started on what bar? If you were counting it, um, it started off right. on the right. Not You'd actually start nine, two, three, four, ten, two, wow. three, four, eleven. Yeah. Five, one. Five. Let's see if we can do that so again. Basically, five, five, one, one. So, in. So this is really important to file away. This is really important harmonic knowledge for a harmonic for a poor wandering harmonica player <laughs> hoping to connect with some willing guitar players <laughs> who are like, go away, kid, right? You had, a, by the way, a question. I never did answer your question. What was your oh, question? Oh, wouldn't it be easier to just learn to play the guitar? That's <laughs> 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 way of learning this. I'm going to put the effort in. I think I might as well learn to play the guitar. That's not a bad, honestly, it goes yeah. a long way. It goes a long way. And you can talk to guitar players, which is a good thing. People will learn this stuff, I take it. Absolutely. Yeah, basic yeah. folk guitar. Yeah, so basic. Then you can play the guitar. Then you can play the guitar, too. Yeah. Yes, it diversifies your... I think I find enough. it easier to, to apply it to that than try to apply it yeah. to this. I find it hard to apply it to this, but if I was asked to learn something, I, this is for myself, I think I'd be really right. probably try to do that. That's a good, but that's actually a good creative response to the challenge. Yeah, yeah might as well. Join the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I became a one-man band. Yeah, I was to show up, yeah. one-man band, I would show up and I, and I would just say, well, guitar player couldn't make it. Uh, and I, you know, oh, isn't that horrible? No, not. I'm ready to go, you know. Mm -hmm. So I made a big deal of the fact that I was a one-man band with no guitar player. Didn't need a guitar player. Now I have a guitar player, and I love, I love guitar players. But um, let's, let's count this then. Because here's what I'm going to do. And this is how you'll know if you're any good at this. Eventually, I should be able to plop this down in the middle of the progression, anywhere. And you should challenge yourself to figure out where you are in the progression. You've just woken up out of a drunken stupor and you're on stage. <laughs> and it's your turn to blow a solo. 
I'm telling you, this is you have to know it that well eventually. So you don't start there, but that's a challenge you can have. You can, I'm going to put that on you. Let's see how that works. Funky blues and cities. Let's. The moment you can count it, the moment you actually have the count inside you and know you can lead the count, raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> going to be the one chord. And I thought, and I think on that very first chord, you think it's the one chord. Let's do it again. Oh, you heard it go down. Da -da -da. It went down. So it went, went, went down a whole step. Yeah. And I just had enough experience that I know, okay, oh, so we're on the, so I was exactly like you. For the first bar, I didn't know where I was. It's okay if you didn't know where you were. But I've heard the five to four, and so what I'm going to tell you is, when a blues doesn't start on the, on, on the first beat of the first bar, most of the time it actually does, it starts here. Mm -hmm. So I've heard a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a challenge. I'm going to put this down in the middle. Mm -hmm. Tell me where we are when you know. And I'll, I'll raise my hand the moment I know. <laughs> Shuffle in A. Let's see. Sometimes these are weird, so let's try this. Sounds like a four, five. Okay, let's start right at the end. Yeah, right on the catching on. So five and five instead of five and four, yeah. which is much more, although that's unusual in a shuffle blues. Um, it's not unusual in rock and roll. Oh, Carol, don't let him steal your heart away. I mean, oh, Carol, don't let him steal your heart away. I'm going to learn to dance whatever. Uh, anyway. Either way or whatever. Yeah, and, and so rock and roll often keeps on the five instead of the four. Good. You hear what? What's your name again? Diane. Diane. So Diane, that's exactly right. That's you because be... I've played rhythm guitar in the past yeah. life. So guitar. So once again, yeah. we decide that for harmony. You can do it on musical too. It's easier. <laughs> let's do. Let's. Uh, here's one called Lonesome Blue. This is probably a. So this is all true for slow blues too. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there was a change. Yeah, it was. Let's let's do a different one. Hopefully, that'll be. Uh, how about that? Wait a minute. Swing an F. How about this? Yeah, 
stuff like that. Um, yeah. But at least we got the intro right. Here's Jimmy Lee. Every groove a blues man needs. Let's try this. Yeah, me too. We need to put on some actual music. So let me see if I can do that. <laughs> 